Hello, my name is David Webb, and this is a video for DweeboVision. I am a Scrabble Grandmaster, and in this video I am going to play Scrabble while providing in-game commentary on my moves. Hopefully this will help to improve your game, and be fun to watch. The game has just started, so let's join the action. It's me to go first. I've got a lot of vowels, I don't have a bingo. I'm looking to play off a lot of these vowels. And I've got the W for score. I would also like to play off one of the eyes, and I can do that with Towie. It's going to leave two vowels, but that's not too much of a problem. Now, what I could do instead of that is a wait, and the advantage of this is that it retains the E. Or it would do if I had the right tiles. I'll stick with Towie. Now, this is basically what I want to do, but is there a better way of doing this? Is there an alternative five-letter play? Well, not that I can see. Well, my vowel consonant balance has been addressed, but I'm a long way from a bingo, and I've, I've got too many high-scoring tiles. But I should be able to sort this out. Cowie is good, C-O-W-Y. The C is quite a bingo -y tile, so... My priority is simply playing off the W and the Y. And Wei and Yao can do that. Towie takes an R at the end. I don't think it takes an S, but it might. I have neither of those tiles, so that's not my concern for this go. I'm close to City Ward but I don't have it. I'm looking in column 5 to see if I've got a double-double through the O of Towie, but I can't see one. I've got the wood suffix. Well, I think Towie's is good, but I am going to challenge that. Yep. Guys takes an A in front. So I may be able to use that. A word beginning WA or YA. Or CA. But the priority is getting rid of the W and the Y. Let me see what this scores. That's 20 points, so can I do better than 20? I can't play Cowie in this spot. I can't see anywhere good to play Cowie. And in any event, the C is a fine tile, and it is, is a bingo tile, and it's preventing my rack from being vowel heavy. So I think this uh, rack leave is fine. I'm still a long way from a bingo, but this is fairly balanced. I've only got a duplicate A. Through an O, I would have avocado. I've got a void on my rack. Can't see anywhere great to play that right away. I've got a double-double lane to consider with the G of guys. Ah, I could play Avoid and Agize. Well, that's just been blocked. I now have Avoid in column 11. And the double-double lane is still open in row E for a play with G-I in it. Well, I can't see a play which works there. I am... 
two points behind. Now what about playing in row J? I could play VAC across here. 26 points, but I'm leaving myself with an imbalanced rack. So, what can I do about that? OW doesn't take any of the tiles that I have after it. And the trouble with playing a void in column 11 is that it's placing the A in row A, opening up the triple letters, the triple word squares. Now, what about playing void across here? Twenty four points, but it's keeping double A. Now, can I use this guy's hook and have a better rack leave? I certainly want to play off the V. So I could play Diva, keeping A, C, O. Now, Avoid scores 30 points, which is a lot. So maybe I do want to do that. Or Avo down here, 18 points, but that's opening up a hot spot at E5. Do I want to sacrifice 12 points? Well, this is a better rack leave. ACDI is a better rack leave than. A, C. But this doesn't feel optimal. But what else could I do? What about column 8 parallel to guys? To the two its left, can't see anything there. I think I will go with a vow, I like the good rack leave. Not a good rack. Kodaya is good as a six letter play. Can't see anywhere to play that immediately. I'm wondering if I should have played a void in column 11. Iodic is good. Can't see anywhere to play that. This is going to be a tricky rack to leave a good rack leave. UG takes an H and an S after it. I've got neither. Ah, now I could play Kodaya in row J, making Geist. Only 19 points, but it certainly sorts the rack out. And by turning over six tiles I would be in, would have been increasing my chances of drawing a bingo. My opponent has played a bingo. He has also provided a spot for me to play Kodaya, but it's through the eye of Inanus which would leave me with two eyes. I don't want to do that. So is there an alternative is there an alternative play in column one? Let me see what Iodic scores. Twenty four points, which isn't too bad. The rack leave is very vowel heavy, but it's the best possible set of three vowels. 
And I am opening up a bingo lane in column two, which is good because I'm behind. It would be nice to play off one more vowel. But I can't see a way of doing that. So I think I will go with this. Yeah, that's the problem with keeping um, a vowel heavy rack leave is that you end up with a vowel heavy rack. Bow is good. Can't see anywhere to play it. I'm looking in column 11 to see if I can play parallel to TIG. Now I'm 35 points behind with my opponent on turn, so I'm about a bingo behind. I'm wondering if I've got to play through T-O-N in column four. Can't see one. Ode is good, so maybe I've got to play beginning with D in row K. Ma takes an A after it. Well, I could play Daub from A4 down. Let me see what this scores. Or, or even Board in the same spot. Board is slightly better because the B is harder to score off than the D. 30 points, that's a good score. I'm keeping the same triplicate of tiles. But I think this is a difficult rack to resolve. I'm just... Oh, I was wondering about playing Beautied in row D, making Agais, but that doesn't work. Now, board as it stands is going... It is creating a bingo lane in row A. It's going to attract my opponent which will keep row K and column 10 and 11 free for bingos. Hopefully he won't score too much off the B. If he plays to the right, then row 2 will... column 2 will also stay available as a bingo lane. Now I am dependent on drawing some consonants. Which I don't do, but I do have the X, and the X benefits from having lots of vowels. So, do I have a good play? I've got biaxial in row A, if that stays available, but I'm not expecting it to. I've got axial in row K, and I've got axial in column 10, placing the X on the triple letter square. I am going to be keeping the U, but two U's have already been played, so the risk of duplicating the U is low. Now, what plays would use the U and the X? Well, I think I'd want to play off the A as well. I'm nearly close to auxilia. Now I've got bows, B-E-A-U-X, in row A, if that stays available. That would leave a rack leave of A-I-L, so that would be my preferred play. Wow, stays available, fantastic. So, bows, 42 points. And I'm opening up a bingo lane in row B. Is there something better? 
my opponent hasn't opened up anywhere amazing, and I think this rack leave is the best I can achieve. Now, O's without the B is also a valid word, so is there anywhere for O's on this board? Well, there is, but it's not going to score more than bows. I draw the Q, but I've got the I and the N to go with it, so I've got Chi and Chin. And I've got the A, so I could play Cat and Agais in row D. I'm looking around to see where I can play Chi and Chin. Well, I've got Chin in, well, both of them in column 11, but Chin is going to score significantly more because it will hit the double word square. Chin, Jin, and T. 34 points. Now I'm only 17 points behind, so I am clawing my way back into this game without a bingo. But both blanks are unseen. So my opponent could be on the brink of bingoing. I've got Trank in row D, T R A N Q. I'm looking around for any other spots to play off my queue. The queue is non bingo -y. I don't have a U to go with it, so I'm anxious to dump it as soon as possible. And it's really just a matter of what the best score I can get for it is. I will be taking into account rack leave as well. My opponent's taking a while with his move, so maybe he is close to a bingo. Writer. Yep, think that's good. Slightly unusual word, so I am going to challenge. And it's fine. And he's taken my chin spot. And my trank spot and my cat spot. He's taken every single Q spot. So... Do I have anything better than this? 27 points. Well, I am at least able to get rid of the Q. Not a huge score. But this board has still got bingo potential. And there are 35 tiles left and, and a blank. So I'm not out of this game yet. Great, there is the blank. I've got Uriel in row K, making so and two. What else do I have? Column 12 isn't that great because R only takes an E after it. But there is column 10 because I could put an R in between the E of guys and the R of writer. So do I have a bingo beginning with R? Can't see one. I don't have a bingo with the blank as an E, so column 12 isn't available. Now what about the front hooks for writer? B for sure. And that may well be it. But I don't have a bingo with the blank as a B. Column 2 has been taken out by my opponent's play of foe. So at the moment, I'm just looking at Uriel in row K. I think what I will do is run through the alphabet for the blank to see if any other seven-letter bingos pop into my mind. I'm not quite sure why this is doing this. Okay. Gural is good, not Gurial.
Great. My Uriel spot remains available. My opponent has opened up another bingo lane in column 13. But only for a 7, so I'm going to continue going through the alphabet. That's the Uriel's play. I would have toroidal through a D and idolater. Well, Uriel's is all I've seen. So that's what I'm going to play. Urali's is also good, but I don't think... Ah, well, Urali's would place... A consonant next to the triple letter square. But I'm behind, so I think I will leave that hotspot available. Great, I draw the J for score. Only 21 tiles unseen, or in the bag rather, plus 7 on my opponent's rack. I'm 50 points behind. So can I score well with my J? Well, I can place it above the A of Uriel's. I could play Jap. 28 points. Great, that stays available. Plus two floaters, the C and the T. I don't have a bingo this turn. So what can I do with my J? I could play Benj across here. That's 39 points. That's pretty good. And the rack leave does have synergy. And the remaining tiles are quite bingo -y. And this isn't obstructing any bingo lanes. So anything better than Benj? I don't think so. Well, I'm just looking at column two. I could play Raj. But that doesn't outscore Benj. I now have a vowel shortage. There are 21 tiles left. Only 8 vowels. And this is what happens when you get a vowel excess early on in the game and play your way through them. The bag becomes unbalanced and you end up with racks like this at the end. But I only need two or three vowels to maximise my bingo prospects. And I do have scoring tiles in the H and the P. Good score by my opponent. 55 points for him. He's now got a 100 plus point lead. 11 tiles in the bag. What can I do? I certainly want to play off one of the R's. I don't want to obstruct the floaters. I could play a harp in row L. And this is obstructing floaters. But... It's also opening up a bingo lane in row M for a bingo ending in E. And SH does take an A as well. The rack leave is quite good if I draw vowels. And if my opponent plays down from the P onto the triple word square at O15, he'll be providing additional floaters. And finally, the floating T of Evict is not completely obstructed by Harp. And at the moment I'm over 100 points behind, so it's no good just balancing my rack and getting a bingo. I need to score and get a bingo. Now I'm wondering about playing Ra in row L, which would also ro open up 
row M without providing the access to the triple word square and without obstructing the C and the T. But the problem with playing RAH is that I'm keeping four consonants. I'd much rather only keep three. Well, I draw no vowels at all, but there are seven left, so there are now an equal number of vowels and consonants. That duplicate S is a bit annoying. The S is usually a good tile, but not when you've got six consonants to go with it. There aren't too many vowels to play through. There's the I of evict, so I could play kern for not many points. And there's the A of Urioles. I could play rank through that, or ranks, or calms. Well, I think that's probably decided this game. Good spot by my opponent. 79 points for Parole E. There are no tiles left, so what I've got, I'm stuck with. So this is what I was thinking about playing. Carns down here. And if I do that, I've got fins in column 13 as an out. Do I have a second out? Possibly not. Now, what am I... How's time looking? Four minutes left. So what can I do that's better than Khans? It's really a matter of looking around at the available vowels, and there aren't too many of them. Well, at least with Khans, I've got the possibility of going out. And my opponent's got a lot of vowels, so... Or three vowels and a Y, so he may not obstruct my out. Especially as he's a long way ahead. So at the moment, the only out I've seen is fins in column 13 through the eye of evict. I do, however, have fist in row G, making tigs and fe. Great, my out outplay remains available. 12 points. Just waiting for my opponent to formally end the game. Which he does. And the final score is 349 to me, 488 to my opponent. A winning margin to him of 139 points. So well done to my opponent. Let's see what I missed. It was me to go first, and there were no there were no five letter plays which retained an e, so Towie was fine. Cogway, that's a nice word. E seven. Where's that? Ah, through the G of guys. Now, what did I do here? I played Yao for twenty keeping ADIC. Well, my rack leave is significantly better than the rack leaves shown, so I certainly wouldn't have wanted to retain either the W or the Y. So Cogway, certainly better than Yao, but most of the others were not.
Vatic and Agai is very nice, 35 points. That certainly would have been my preferred play if I'd have seen it. What I did instead was avow for 18. Yeah, that's that's not great. But it is keeping ACID and a lot of the other rack leaves shown there are uh, significantly inferior to that. But I think Vatic was the play. Good bingo by my opponent. Chow, 22 points at B11. That would have been good. Making Tar and Geo. Instead, I played Iodic for 24. Keeping AEI. Yeah, I suspect even plays like Adoy at 1F. Or, yeah, play of Adoy keeping EIC, sacrificing six points, but keeping a C with two vowels rather than three vowels. They're probably uh, comparable plays, or Adoy may even be slightly better. But this was a, a tricky rack to deal with. Bato a D8, again utilising the Agai's hook. Didn't consider that. What I did instead was board, which kept AEI and allowed my vowel problems to continue, so I think Bato would have been a better play. Well, there's my bow play in third place, but the two above it keep the U, and I was behind. The U is a non bingo -y tile, so I prefer bows. This was my opponent's rack. He played writer for 89. He could have got 105 for figure. I see a double-double in column 11, making git and ug. Yakona, I3, didn't consider that. Yep, down from the Y and the A of Yao and Inanist. That would certainly have been a better play than Chin, which looks like it was the second best. Here I saw Urials and Uralis, and those were the only bingos. Heparin at C13. Oh wow, quite nice making REH and Tide and running through the I of Evict. It's not a bingo, but it's 45 points, and it would have retained the J for score. On the other hand, it would have burnt a lot of tiles, which would have expedited the end of the game at a time when I still needed a bingo. And Benj was only six points behind, but kept a more bingo-y rack leave. So, having been excited by seeing Heparin, I think Benj was actually a better play. Harp at L12, that was my play, keeping NRS, and that looks fine. Nice bingo by my opponent, Paroli, and he could have played that in row M for a few more points than he got. This was my horror show of a rack, certainly no way back with this rack. Fanks was available at in the same spot as I played Khans. And the better play is simply the one which would have two outs, and it's not clear to me if either of those does have two outs. And finally, Finns was the only out play. So, um, a huge loss by over 100 points and a few uh, suboptimal plays in that game. But the the challenge of Scrabble is that you're constantly uh, presented with um, with complex situations, the board, the clock, your rack, and finding the best play is not easy, and the appeal of the game is the uh, struggle with each individual rack to find the best play. Sometimes you find it, sometimes you find one which is... Um, nearly best, but not quite, and sometimes you miss it by a margin. 
And that's why it's important to review your games, because in game time, you've absolutely no idea um, how well you're playing. A post-game analysis enables you to uh, get a feel for that and to identify errors that you've made with a view to um, avoiding making them in future. So I hope you enjoyed watching that video and got something out of it. My name is David Webb, and this has been a video for Dweebo Vision.